Hi, my name is Stephanie Krieger and I'm a Microsoft Office MVP. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a few tasks from the article titled Using VBA to Format Long Documents in the 2007 Office System in a Fraction of the Time. And you can find that article on the MSDN Office Developer Center. Well, most of what I'm going to show you can apply to your work with VBA in many Office programs, but since this demo is about formatting long documents, let's go ahead and jump over to Word. If you record macros, you know that those macros can save you a lot of time on repetitive tasks, like formatting the 68 tables that I copied from Excel into this sample report, for example. But you also know that recorded macros have limits. So in this example, I would need to run the macro separately for each table, right? I'd need a different macro for each type of table that requires unique formatting. And I'd probably still have to take some actions manually for things that I can't record. All right, well, in this demo, we're going to look at a couple of different types of VBA constructs that you can use to save a lot more time than that. First, we're going to look at a loop, which is a type of statement that enables you to loop through multiple instances of an object, such as to apply your formatting to all tables in the document at once. And next, we're going to look at conditional statements, and that lets you see how you can execute different actions in the same macro based on conditions you specify, like when you need different formatting based on the type of table. Okay, so take a look at this document. I've got two different types of tables. So right here you see products by region, and then below it there's companies by quarter and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through this document you can see those two types of tables are repeated many times throughout the document now I want those tables to all have some formatting in common for consistency right like I want them to be horizontally centered on the page and I want them to all have table styles that can have some nice formatting and look clean but maybe I want them to also be a little bit different so that if someone is looking for products by region tables they can find them easily by a different color maybe a different size than the companies by quarter tables all right let's start by recording a macro for this first type of table click into the table start the macro recorder we'll just use the defaults there on the table tools design tab apply the style I need on the layout tab go to table properties I'm going to measure in percent because I want this table to take up 80% of the width of the page and then center it horizontally on the page. Click OK and the macro recorder. I'm going to use Alt F11 to get into the VB editor so we can look at that recorded macro. You can use the developer tab as well. You can find the VB editor on the developer tab. Now when you look at this recorded macro, you immediately see the limitation of recorded macros, and that is the fact that you have to act on the active selection, right? In this case, it is the selected or active table. Let's try writing this macro instead. The first thing that I'm going to do in my macro is I'm going to declare an object variable for tables, and I'm going to do that because I'm going to use a loop for each next loop, in this case, to loop through the collection of all tables in the active document. Now I'll go ahead and put the end part of the statement in right away so that I don't forget later because you cannot have for each without next. You will get an error when you try to run the macro. Repeating the object variable here is optional but I really recommend doing it when your macros get more complex. You want to easily be able to see which start and end parts go together, keep your code organized, and Let's go ahead and copy the code from the recorded macro. I don't need to retype it. I can just edit it. So I'm going to replace selection.tables1 with the object variable in this case. And I can repeat that on each row. But you know what? I can also go that even one better. Notice how the object variable is repeated on each line just like selection.tables1 in the recorded macro. Well, whether you're using an object name or a variable, you often don't have to repeat the same code over and over. In fact, any time you see the same code repeated in your code should be a sign to you that you might be able to do less work. If I group these statements together, since they're all acting on the same object, I could type less code and I can give the code less work to do as well. I'm going to go ahead and add a with and with statement and notice what I can do here is delete the repeated instances of the variable name. Again, a paired statement with requires end with. 
And what this grouping statement does is it helps to organize your code and save you typing, but when you start writing longer code, it also can make your macros run more efficiently. So look, for example, at the recorded macro at the top of the screen. Well, VBA has to hit that table four times, right? Select the table and perform that first action. Select the table again and perform that next action, etc. But when you group the statements together, VBA knows that it's going to hit that table once and perform these four actions. That's going to be a lot more efficient, again, especially when you get into longer and more complex code. So of course we have our nice little macro here. Let's see what happens. I can run it from the toolbar up here. I'm a keyboard person, so I'm going to use the F5 shortcut key. Give it a second to run. Remember, you can see while it's running, it'll show you that it's running on the title bar and Alt F11 to toggle back to the document. And really nice, right? One click, format 68 tables, and that would be great if I wanted all 68 tables to look the same. But again, I want to have some differences. I want two types of table formatting in this document, one for the tables that look at products across regions, and one for the tables that look at companies across quarters. So I'm going to use a conditional statement to help me get that done in the same macro. And what I need to be able to set up a condition is to have something that is common to all of the tables that I want to use the same formatting. There, in more generic terms, I'm going to need to have something in common to all of the objects on which I want to perform the same actions. And that will be the conditions that I specify. So that could be the text of the first heading cell. Right? It also could be something easier though, in this case, my products by region tables all have six columns. My companies by quarter tables all have five columns. So let's take a look at how to get that done. The type of statement that we're going to look at is an if-then-else statement. So I'll add that right here. If the count of columns is six, then apply this style and we can indent that further for a more organized code. Else, let's go ahead and copy and edit that. I want the same style with a different color, just for a bit of differentiation, okay? So if I have six columns, apply this style. Otherwise, apply this style. Now, let's say you're maybe thinking, well, you know, what if I have other tables that don't fit either of these conditions and I don't want them formatted? Instead of an else statement, you could use else if and set a second condition. So if it's five, then do this. If, the, if one of those two conditions is not met, then no action's going to happen. Of course, you can have multiple else if statements in the same conditional structure here. You can have multiple conditions even on the same line. Check out the referenced article for this demo for some additional examples of working with this type of structure. In the meantime, we want to add one other thing into this structure, and that is I want the five column tables to be a little bit smaller than the six column tables. So I'm going to move the preferred width up into this conditional structure, right? And I can just copy and change that as I did right here, make it a little bit smaller. But keep in mind that the order in which you execute code is going to make an enormous difference sometimes. Right? Notice that setting the preferred width type to percent is all the way down at the bottom now, but I'm setting those percentages earlier. Can't have that. I need to move that statement before the condition. So with this table, set the preferred width type to measure in percent. Then, if there's six columns, use this style and this width. If there's five columns, use this style and this width, and then center the table horizontally on the page. All right, let's give that a go. Going to just hit the F5 key and give it a second to run, Alt F11, and I have perfectly formatted tables all set to go. Let's take a look at one other thing now. All right, we looked at a for each next loop, right? But I want to mention that there's a couple of other types of looping statements as well. You can get a lot more flexibility from a number of types of loops. One of those is a for next loop rather than for each next. And that can give you some more flexibility because you can specify, for example, that you want to format all but the first 10 tables or you want to format only odd numbers tables. 
You also have another type of structure called a do loop, and you have do while loops that allow you to execute actions while a condition is true, or do until loops that allow you to execute actions until a condition becomes true. Well, you can find a link to learn about all of the types of loops and see more examples in the referenced article. Also want to note, we looked at one type of conditional statement, right? That's the if-then-else structure. But there's also another type of conditional structure called select case. And select case can actually be more flexible and more efficient in some cases. And you can see an example of a select case statement in the referenced article as well. Now before I give you the URL for that article, I want to mention one last thing, and that is that once you get the basics down for working with the type of structures you see here, you're going to find that you can nest multiple loops or conditional statements, and you're also going to find that all of these statements are core VBA. They're not specific to the word object model. You can use them in any Office program with which you use VBA. In fact, you're going to see an example of nesting statements in PowerPoint VBA in the referenced article, so I think it's time to get you that URL. As mentioned, this article is available on the MSDN Office Developer Center. If you don't know the Office Developer Center, what a great site filled with so many resources, and you've got the address of that site on this screen. And if you'd like to jump straight to this article for right now, you can also see the direct link to this article on this slide as well. In the meantime, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this demo, and I'll see you next time.